I'll, I'll, I'll get another for the halfway. Uh, maybe I'll get over there or something. <laughs> we can box them in. Okay, so this is the... Uh, closer. Closer? Ah, oh, yes, this is the proximity microphone. You have to be very close, like this. I guess the, I, I can tell when it's working. Ah, uh, so, uh, financially inquiring of uh, NASFIC bids. So, uh, we have two each NASFIC bids, uh, Detroit and Phoenix. And uh, they've agreed to uh, present in alphabetic order. So, there'll be a presentation. And no, no problem, we can pause for a moment. Okay. Uh, they will present, uh, we have about 10 minutes each to make a presentation, and that should leave plenty of time for questions and answers after that. So, uh, if Detroit will come up, then they can go ahead. Hi there, my name is Tammy Coxon. I'm the chair of the Detroit NASPIC bid. We've also got Dave Gallagher here. He's our facilities person. Um, so we're really excited to be bidding Detroit for the NASFIC. Detroit is a really interesting city right now. Uh, you're looking at a city that's had a lot of troubles, and I won't deny that, but uh, it's reinventing itself in really interesting and innovative ways. And we think that that energy is going to create a really great backdrop for the NASFIC. Uh, there's still a lot of science and technology innovation going on in Detroit, and that's something we really want to bring into the NASFIC. So oops, my presentation is mostly going to focus on the uh, the facilities that we have, and then I'll talk a little bit at the end about um, what we have in mind for programming. So our hotel is the Detroit Marriott at the Renaissance Center. So this is the iconic building on the Detroit skyline. Uh, the hotel is the tall tower in the center. Uh, so it's right in the central business district of Detroit. Um, great views from all of those hotel rooms. The complex itself contains a number of different amenities, which I'll talk about throughout the presentation. So it is, as the previous slide said, the largest hotel in Michigan. So it has almost 1,300 guest rooms, plenty of room for an ASPIC. Um, 600 doubles. Uh, current room block is about 280 night, uh, rooms on our peak night. But the hotel still has lots of space for us to grow. Um, we are uh, budgeting conservatively and planning conservatively because it's really hard to know how big a NASPIC will be. And the last NASPIC in Raleigh was very small, so we're taking that approach. But we purposefully chose a hotel that would give us room to grow. Our room rate is $118 per night um, with $1 for Wi-Fi. I don't know why they had to do it that way, but that's what they came up with. So there are a lot of suites in the hotel, and they're all clustered on the upper floors. Uh, there are 52 total. All have these wall-to-ceiling windows, spectacular views. Currently, we have eight deluxe suites, uh, which is basically a two-bay suite plus an adjoining bedroom. Um, and those are blocked on two floors, and that would be where the parties and the con suite are. If, again, we are larger and we have more people wanting suites, wanting to host parties, there are lots of other um, suites nearby. Our rate on the suites is $209 a night, and we do have a corkage waiver. Uh, the hotel doesn't place any restrictions on outside food and drinks served in uh, sleeping rooms. There is a restaurant rate in the hotel. Um, they serve American Midwest cuisine, uh, open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and they will work with us to develop menus that we think are appropriate for our group in terms of uh, pricing. The hotel is the host of a 10,000 person anime con in, uh, in Detroit each year. And so they're very used to fans and used to um, creating a menu that, that is amenable to, uh, to our desires and staying open late um, and reflecting sort of our fanish patterns. Uh, another food option directly in the hotel is Volt. That's their uh, bar. So for people who like cons for bar con, we do have a great centrally located bar that'll be a great social hub for the convention. Free wireless in the, in the, um, in the bar. They also serve food, cocktails, beer, and again, as I said, just a nice social hub. So our meeting facilities. Uh, the hotel has 100,000 square feet of space. So again, lots of room for an ASPIC. Um, currently booked, we have the Ontario Exhibit Hall, which is the, uh, it's a 25,000 square foot exhibit hall divided, that divides into two sections. Um, right there, yep, thank you. Uh, and so our plan is that that will be where things like art show, dealer's room, exhibits, concourse are. Those will be in the east or larger section of the uh, exhibit hall. And then in the west section is where we'll have um, 
gamers and makers. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about makers in a moment. But uh, so the west section would be a 24-hour space for all sorts of different activities that need um, a longer time period. Uh, that area is also set up very well with uh, registra you know, uh, a registration area, uh, also well located for our operations and logistics. Um, then you go up two levels and you get to um, all the main function rooms. So these are all on one level. Um, we have the Mackinac Ballroom, which seats 400 people, and then uh, all of the function rooms around it. So there are eight in total. They seat anywhere from 100 to 175, depending on the room, um, and are subdividable into smaller spaces. So again, lots of space for a wide variety of programming. On Saturday night, we have reserved the Ambassador Ballroom, which is on the floor with the Ontario Exhibit Hall. So that seats 1,200 people. Um, and we, um, our plan is to host the masquerade there. Um, again, if we are growing, if we're bigger, if it looks like our numbers will be large, we'll look at picking up the ambassador ballroom for more of the weekend. So as I said, everything is located in the Renaissance Center. Um, and this is a, a big multifunction office and entertainment uh, area in Detroit. Uh, I, I love this building because to me it feels like what we thought the future would look like. So it's round, first of all, right? And the interior is glass and concrete and there's all these catwalks and it's just a really, really neat space that feels very science fictional. Um, in, the, uh, in the building itself there are over 70 different shops, services, amenities available. Um, and of course the one that most people are most concerned about is dining options. So there's an 1,100 seat food court in the basement of the, uh, of the Renaissance Center. So it has all your standard fast food options. Um, and then also located in the Renaissance is a Starbucks, Potbelly, and Presto Deli. So a variety of other, um, not necessarily fast food, but sort of the next level up. And then there are two um, high-end restaurants, the Andiamo Riverfront and Coach Insignia. So 30 food outlets total right in the Renaissance Center building. But you don't have to go far to get to other dining options. Um, so right outside the Renaissance Center, there are a number of other restaurants in the vicinity, and then there are a number of uh, uh, neighborhoods in the city that have really grown up and have some really compelling dining options. So Greek Town is a classic, historic neighborhood, um, home, in the, uh, home to many uh, Greeks over the years. Uh, the neighborhood's much more eth ethnically diverse now, but the Greek restaurants remain, um, and that Greek culture still remains. And it's also just a general entertainment district, so uh, that's very nearby. And I'll talk a little bit about how you can get to these places in a moment. Corktown used to be where the baseball stadium was. So the baseball stadium has moved, but that area is one of our most exciting districts right now with a lot of new restaurants, new, uh, new bars, new, uh, new entertainment options there. Slow's Barbecue. Is a world is is nationally renowned barbecue place in Detroit. So. Um, and then Midtown again. This is the region of the city that is where we've seen I think the most growth, <coughs> and we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of businesses locating there, bringing a lot of restaurants and nightlife to that area. It's also the area of the city where we have our museums and cultural uh, institutions. So to get to all these places, you can use the Detroit People Movers. So this is, um, someone described it the most useless transit system. Don't think of it as a transit system, think of it as a convenience option. So uh, it's a monorail, also, you know, part of our uh, living in the future. Um, so there's a station located right inside the Renaissance Center. Uh, so very easy to get to. Um, it's a, about, I think, a 20 minute loop to do the entire thing. Uh, it's a four minute wait between cars, only costs 75 cents, and we'll actually probably be able to get some discounted passes through our convention bureau um, to allow people to easily ride the people mover. Uh, so Greek Town, which I mentioned, is just two stops away, uh, and lots of dining and entertainment options there. We also um, have, uh, they publish a guide to the people mover that shows you at each people mover station what the restaurants, services, shops are that are around that station. So uh, Detroit is really easy to get to. It's a Delta hub, and Delta reports that 60% of the US population is within a 90-minute flight of Detroit. Not for those of you who live in California. It's a little bit longer. Um, but there are, direct, there are direct flights from, uh, from LAX, from San Francisco. Um, and for people who are driving, uh, one of the great advantages that we have uh, is that we are a six hour or shorter drive from a lot of population centers. So Chicago, Toronto, really be able to bring in the Canadian part of our uh, North America. Uh, Columbus, Cincinnati, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, 
so a lot of um, a lot of Spanish population centers. And we also have a very active fandom in our own local area. So currently we have uh, an 850 person general SF convention that's celebrating its 40th anniversary next year. And then we also have a new up and coming science fiction slash Linux open source geek convention that is currently bringing in about 1300 people a year. So we have a strong local fan base. Is the 40 year old one confusion? Confusion, okay. yeah. So it, uh, about two minutes left, yeah, and right. we'll hold most of the questions for later. Thanks. So a strong local fan base to draw from. Lots of attractions in Detroit. Um, you can see them there. I'm not going to read through them, but lots of things to see and do while you're there. For people who are interested in makers, uh, that's the, this idea of you know people getting hands-on, using laser cutters, creating things with their hands. Uh, there's a maker fair in California. So Detroit has a maker fair as well, and it will be the week after the NASFIC. So it would be a great opportunity to come to Detroit for the NASFIC, do some touristing, even head to Chicago for a few days midweek, come back for the Maker Fair, and really make a trip, a Midwest adventure out of it. Um, this is our committee. We have a lot of people with a lot of convention running experience at both the Worldcon level and the local level. Uh, so this is most of, the, most of the people who are active on our committee. I'm going to take my last minute to talk a little bit about what we have in mind for programming. So as I said, Confusion is our 40-year-old general SF convention, very strong focus on literary science fiction. We have dozens of authors who attend each year, and we really focus on literary, and we want to bring that tradition into the NASFIC. Uh, Confusion also has a strong tradition of science program. There's a science guest of honor every year for I think about the last 20. So a real focus on hard science, bolstered particularly in Detroit by all the interesting things going on with advanced energy, with uh, um, electric vehicles, all the really interesting things coming out of the automotive industry. And we also have a strong FILP program. And then we want to bring in the attributes of PenguinCon with their focus on open source technology, geeks, techies, makers, and really combine those things. And then the other thing we're really excited about is uh, commemorating the anniversary of uh, detention, which was the 1959 World Con held in Detroit. So this would be the 55th anniversary of detention, and we are planning to commemorate that with an entire track of programming, doing things such as taking panel topics from 1959 and rerunning them now with new panelists, um, looking at what do we think the future would be like in 1959, and what is it really like? How has technology changed in ways we hadn't anticipated? And, uh, and both the chairs of that Worldcon are still alive, and so we're hoping that they'll be able to attend and commemorate the occasion with us. Uh, we also will have you know, a whole section of exhibits devoted to, uh, to detention. So we're really excited about that, and that's where we see bringing a lot of new value to uh, our local Fanish scene is by really bringing in that Fanish history. And with that, uh, thank you, Tammy. Thank you. And we'll let... Uh our little shake and bake here for changing over presentations.